The acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine is set to testify before congressional committees today. According to reports, Bill Taylor, he called it, quote, crazy to stall millions of dollars in military aid as a potential quid pro quo. The testimony comes roughly a week after White House acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney defended the move, saying that's just how business is done. Mm. Joining us from Capitol Hill to dig into all of this is Republican Congressman Jody Heiss of Georgia. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, welcome. Thanks. Glad to be with you. Appreciate Abs you having me. Absolutely. So, Congressman, you introduced some uh, something that got quite a bit of attention here. You called for the, you know, the, that Representative Adam Schiff has committed some impeachable offenses. You, you laid out a list here, I believe. We have the tweet saying he must be censored and condemned. Uh, what, what's the basis for that, sir? What, what do you think it is that the Congressman has done that, that merits that? Yeah, listen, it's unbelievable that, that Schiff is leading this so-called impeachment inquiry. Uh, he has himself lied to the American public over and over and over and over. Uh, the whole Russian collusion thing where he had a supposedly ir irrefutable evidence and it ended up being totally false. Uh, he comes out with what he refers to as a parody on the president, but he lies to the American people, putting words in the mouth of the president of the United States as though these were words that the president said. They were not hmm. whatsoever. And I mean, it just goes on and on with this. And, and Adam Schiff is uh, someone who not only ought to be censured, but is someone who certainly should not be leading uh, this whole inquiry. So, Congressman, it seems that the Democrats can't seem to make up their mind as to whenever an impeachment vote or inquiry would actually begin. Do you actually expect to see a vote on the House floor before the new year? Well, there, there should be a vote before we even have a, an inquiry. I mean, technically, we're not even in an official impeachment inquiry. This is all unprecedented, what's going on. And here in just a few moments, I'll be making my way down to the, uh, really the dungeon, Adam Schiff's dungeon, as we have yet another uh, hearing uh, that's just make-believe. It's made up of people who are coming, witnesses, who Adam Schiff believe will be able to hurt the president. We, on the other hand, the minority party, are not even allowed to bring witnesses on the other side. This is a one-sided witch hunt being led by someone whose full intent is to take down the president. It is the most unfair, unprecedented process that I believe has ever occurred in, in American history. Mm -hmm. Congressman, what do you think right now is the best defense for Republicans, whether to say that there was no quid pro quo or to say that there was a quid pro quo, but there was actually nothing wrong with it? It seems that Republicans haven't quite settled on what the defense is yet. What's your take on that? Well, I think there's a couple of things. In the first place, the president of Ukraine said there was no quid pro quo. He said he never felt any pressure. He said he was not even aware that there was money being held up. So how can you, on this end, have a quid pro quo when the person on the other end is totally aware of any of it and, and said he never felt any pressure? Then beyond that, I believe the American people understand fairness and they understand that the process that's being led right now is anything but fair. It is uh, taking place in secrecy. The American people are being held in the dark. Uh, members of Congress are not even being allowed to come look at the transcripts and read this and participate in what's going on. It is a one-sided show uh, that's totally unfair, totally unprecedented, and I believe the American people understand that. Congressman, I do want to ask you, I mean, it does seem that many of these officials, have they express consternation behind closed doors about withholding military aid to Ukraine. Do you think that that is an issue? I mean, ultimately, I know the aid was given, but the, the instinct to withhold it, does that trouble you or concern you? Well, again, it's, it's information that's going to be coming out, but I, don't you think the American people expect mm -hmm. our government, when we're giving hundreds of millions of dollars, don't you think it's, it's only proper for us to make sure that that money is not going to be wasted, that it's not going to be placed in corrupt hands. I mean, these are taxpayer funds. So I, I think there's always a role of responsibility that our government here ought to take when dealing with other governments to make sure funds are going to be spent properly. Mm -hmm. I think, though, Congressman, this is a good example of the, the problem that Republicans are having. On the one hand, they say, well, there, there was no quid pro quo. The Ukrainian president didn't think that the military aid was being held up over uh, corruption allegations. And then on the other hand, you say that, well, the American people expect that military aid would be held up so that corruption investigations would, would be undertaken. It seems like 
the GOP just hasn't yet settled on, on which claim it, it wants to make. And believe, Taylor today is probably going to make the claim that there, there was a quid pro quo. Of course, Mick Mulvaney has said as well. Do, do you think that they are right that there was a quid pro quo and that that is appropriate because President Trump was trying to root out corruption? No, I mean, listen, it's, it's bargaining. Uh, I think is is frequently used when when we are giving hundreds of millions of dollars. We want to make sure it's going to be spent properly. What the accusation that's coming up here is that the quid pro quo, as as you refer to, as others are referring to, was used specifically to get dirt on on a political opponent. That was not what's happening here. We had an ongoing mm -hmm. investigation with the Department of Justice, and the president was asking another country to cooperate in that investigation. And so you, you look at all the, the factors involved here, and I believe absolutely there was no quid pro quo uh, in accordance with the accusations that the, the Democrats are trying to paint. Yeah. So final question for you, sir. As a member of the House Oversight Committee, are you heartened to see the president move the G7 uh, announcement from Doral to possibly Camp David or another location? I think that's a wise move. Uh, at this point, you know, there's, there's just a lot of issues that are floating out there, no reason to create any more issues. Uh, and so I think the president was wise in doing that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, sir. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Great to be with you. Absolutely. The favorability of a couple of candidates has taken a little bit of a hit after presidential primary debate number four. And is Senator Bernie Sanders being marginalized by the corporate media? Are skittish Democrats looking for more options when it comes to choosing a presidential candidate? We'll talk about all those topics with our panel next.